Well, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you to the uh, Open Design Alliance and to Neil to, to give us a, a credible excuse to come to Italy. So, <laughs> so um, just a quick show of hands. How many in the room are currently developing solutions in the cloud? That's a good number. How many, so those, lower your hands, how many are planning to develop solutions in the cloud? Okay, it's about the same, all right. So, Ershenk, my colleague Ershenk and I, we work for a team in the, in the Azure engineering team, so we are part of development. And what we do is uh, uh, we help partners uh, and the software partners to get onto Azure and to our, our Azure marketplace. So we've been working closely in the past few months with the ODA uh, to make sure that the, the open cloud uh, uh, component is, is as performant and, and as uh, well architected as it can be. Um, you just heard from Neil and, uh, uh, about open cloud, and in the next sessions, you're going to hear more about the implementation details. But what we wanted to do is to give you a perspective of, fr from the from the point of view of a cloud vendor, of why, uh, why Azure, why developing solutions on Azure, what are the advantages, and also with partnering with Microsoft. So with that, uh, let's get started. So my uh, Ershenk is going to start with the, with a few slides, and then uh, I'm going to come back and re recap. Thank you. Wait, I thought that we would be doing our little dance here. No, no dancing today. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm Ershenk. Buongiorno, everyone. Um, so we are uh, we are part of a pod, not like the P pods, but Diego is on the business side. I'm on the technology side, and I've been working on the Azure technologies since uh, 2009. So that makes it about 10 years. Uh, big chunk of my life is actually spent on Azure technologies. So I'm here to talk briefly about Azure. But before going further, Diego asked the question uh, about cloud, but I want to sp I want to be a little bit more specific. How many of you guys are working on Azure? Yeah, great. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Um, so, as I said, I've been on, uh, I've been working on the Azure technologies for about ten years, and things are interesting for a person like I am because things change like crazy. There are over two hundred technologies, two hundred services, currently available on Azure. And it seems like that every other week or so that a new thing is popping up. So I'm not going to go through all of them. Uh, the way that we cover Azure and Microsoft is that we rely uh, on four different pillars in explaining what's available on Azure. But before going to those four pillars, uh, let me first briefly talk about the potential areas of the services as they appear. So we have tons of tools, best of class tools, uh, in the market for developing solutions and also managing solutions. Uh, we recently acquired GitHub. Uh, there are also the Power Platform that's, uh, that enables the citizen coding, uh, citizen application developers to uh, put together solutions with minimum code. Uh, we also have um, infrastructure uh, that covers from compute all the way to identity and lots of serverless um, uh, technologies and we also extend on the, uh, on the edge. Uh, this is the high-level map again, and I urge you to go and subscribe to the Azure uh, blog uh, where all of the updates are always published. Um, looking at who uses Azure, uh, just turns out that since because Microsoft is a very strong enterprise player, Almost more than 95% of the uh, Fortune 500 companies use, uh, are using Microsoft Azure. They use Azure in multiple different capacities, um, starting from the infrastructure as a service all the way to the platform as a service in hybrid capacities, uh, very diverse set of uh, uh, technology use uh, you can see over there. Um, as I said before, uh, we try to explain Azure in four important pillars. Uh, we cover uh, that it's productive, it's hybrid, open, and trusted. Um, so when we say productive, it's all about um, that what is the best thing that you can do? Given your problem, what is the best way that you can move your uh, problem solution over to uh, the Azure technologies? Uh, the uh, Azure teams across the company focus, focus on uh, that being in mind. So they're trying to put together services that 
will make you uh, the most productive on the platform. Uh, we always see it as, uh, since because we've been in the platform business for almost uh, ages, uh, it's very, imp very important for us to make, uh, put together the best of breed platform components for the customers. When we say hybrid, uh, although we're talking about cloud, that does not mean that we expect every single pro uh, solution 100% to be on the cloud. That is not real. So there is going to be some hybrid uh, situations, and then we see we are seeing it over and over again. Uh, the solution expanding both on the cloud side and also the on-premise side. We're seeing a healthy, um, uh, healthy mix of uh, uh, services that's, that are being used. And open, uh, no need to explain what open is, and trusted. Uh, of course, since because we're talking about bringing your data and your application logic somewhere outside of your immediate control, uh, the new place that you uh, move your solution needs to be trusted and you need to be able to uh, trust the platform that is doing the right thing, protecting your data, protecting your investments. Uh, when we look at the productive piece, what we really talk about is that if you look at the high level view of a solution, you can talk about the code, and that operates on your data, and all of that data and the code is uh, living on some surface. And, um, and all across, uh, Microsoft, of course, continues to develop uh, new solutions and in, uh, in innovate new uh, exciting ways uh, for putting together those solutions. One example is AI. If you haven't looked at the AI capabilities for Azure, there is huge change within the past six months, and it's a leapfrog game. I urge you to just go and double click on what Microsoft AI is doing for the past two, uh, for, for the past six months, and you will see amazing innovation there. And of course, all across the board, we're talking about DevOps tools, governance, security, and unified, uh, unified management when we're talking about uh, running your solutions. Uh, when we also look at infrastructure, where, is the, where does this run? Uh, we have on-demand uh, resources on storage, network, and compute. Uh, and some of them are really specialized. When we say networking, for instance, if you have a simulation workload that requires high, com high compute, big compute with huge speeds, we have virtual machines that have InfiniBand enabled. So you can transfer data really fast between different nodes. It's one of the unique cases. We also have purpose-built environments for SAP, NetApp, even Cray, and VMware. So these are uh, optimized for running those workloads. And interestingly enough, um, maybe some of you guys can remember from the old times that Microsoft was not being so friendly with open source, Linux, etc. More than 40% of the virtual machines running on Azure best choice for the Microsoft workloads is Azure because of the easy migrations, uh, the uh, cost savings, just being the native platform helps those workloads a lot. Um, I want to make a special case on the uh, high performance computing. Uh, Microsoft also provides those foundations for putting together high-performance computing uh, solutions. So we have infrastructure, as I mentioned, uh, interconnect like InfiniBand. We have storage solutions that are really performant and also uh, high capacity. We also have the end-to-end -end workflow management for uh, managing your workloads. So when you look at the infrastructure, uh, we provide uh, a very interesting uh, gamut of uh, different um, VMs, uh, VM sizes. We also have the specialized Cray. And when you look at uh, the, uh, inf uh, the interconnect and the availability of machines, uh, you can see the different um, options there. Uh, when you look at the storage, again, you have many different options for uh, putting together the best of breed solutions. It's all about being uh, hybrid if it is needed, and it's all about being able to put in and uh, bring in and bring out data as, as uh, easy as possible. Uh, when we look at the workflow management, we have two major offerings. And the important part to remember here is that uh, when we're looking at HPC workloads, what really matters is that what is your choice of scheduler, how you're going to, how you're going to be scheduling multiple different jobs when you're running HPC workloads. And there we have different options. You can either bring in your own uh, workflow management or workflow scheduler. 
on the Azure Cycle Cloud offering, or if you have uh, more granular running jobs, you can use Azure Batch. Uh, moving over to the hybrid, uh, it is by design uh, hybrid, because the way that we see the world is that the solution is an extension to your on-premise workload. Our worlds started from on-premise. It didn't start the other way around. So uh, Microsoft's Azure uh, design is hybrid by design. Uh, so on the developer platform, we have Azure Stack that mirrors what Azure provides on the cloud side. Uh, on the DevOps side, we use Azure DevOps, um, also known as Visual Studio Team Services in the past. We support the open source ecosystem uh, very strongly. Uh, you, may realize, you may remember that about like six months ago or so, Microsoft completed the acquisition of GitHub. GitHub being the largest developer ecosystem where people go and uh, publish code. Interestingly enough, another tidbit is that not a lot of uh, people know about it, but Microsoft also happens to be the largest single contributor of open source on GitHub uh, through the um, uh, through the uh, IoT industrial uh, team's contributions. Um, and you can notice that uh, a lot of uh, different workloads are uh, native to uh, Azure, such as um, uh, MongoDB, such as uh, Hortonworks. Uh, and we also um, uh, porting the Orbeal or .NET framework itself now is open source and also multi-platform. And in fact, in the next coming months, .NET framework is going to be merging with .NET standard. So the whole .NET framework stack will be available uh, open source and multi-platform with no exceptions. Um, oh, this is, is this yours or is this mine? I can do it. <laughs> okay. So, kind of uh, switching, thank you, switching into, into trust and compliance. So, Azure covers 90 plus compliance and certifications, and many of them are industry specific. I mean, you'll see here uh, 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 ITAR and, and DFARS that are particularly important for manufacturing. And these keep updating every time. Every time we, we do this slide, we have to check <laughs> if we have new. Uh, implementation. So, moving into trusted. So, we we have we can say with a straight face that we have the largest network of data centers across the globe. Uh, as of yesterday, we have 54 uh, Azure data centers. A couple of them are in secret locations because it's for uh, Department of Defense, and one is underwater, <laughs> that, uh, which we're experimenting with data centers underwater for cooling and security because it's, they say that it's harder to get to a data center when it's underwater. Uh, at, the, at the centerpiece of our security story, is the Microsoft Intelligent Security Graph. It's basically, uh, it, it reflects how many, how many data threat uh, um, signals we get on a daily basis. So just a few numbers. We, we analyze about 400 billion of uh, emails uh, a month. We have uh, more than 200 services that we've had for a while, like Outlook.com or Office 365 or uh, X, uh, Xbox Live. And uh, uh, we, with the, we have a billion plus of Azure consumers, plus the authentications that we have uh, an Active Directory and such. It gives us a lot of insight of how people authenticate and, and how people are trying to, to do phishing and, and uh, uh, threats. Um, the, we, we provide the enterprise security for 90% plus of the, of the Fortune 500. And uh, uh, we work with our partners and researchers on, on identifying new security threats. And we have about 3,500 uh, 3, full-time employees that focus only on security. So what this slide, this is still about security, and what, what it's in, uh, trying to, to express is that security is a, is, is a shared responsibility between Microsoft and the customer. So the customer, in this case, is, it could be a Microsoft customer, or if you are a software vendor, your customers. 
or yourself. But it's shared between Microsoft and the, and the ecosystem. And uh, this is, this, what this intends to, to portray is, is that as you move from on-premise to infrastructure as a service, or platform as a service, and SaaS, the level, the, the vendor, in this case Microsoft, handles more and more of the security. So ideally, in, in, if you were having a SaaS solution, you have to wor worry about uh, much less about security than, of course, the other stream of the spectrum, which is on-premise, where the customer has to worry about everything. So, so those were the four pillars of uh, Azure. Let me shift gears a little bit and talk about the Microsoft uh, commercial marketplace. So uh, the, the Azure the Microsoft commercial marketplace is, is much more than, a, than an app store from which you download Candy Crush or something. It's, it's actually a way, the new way to do business, to co-sell with Microsoft. So think of it as one integrated catalog where if you are a software vendor, your solutions coexist with Microsoft solutions, and you're basically in our price list. So by virtue of that, it shows on the web store, which is uh, the one that the businesses, the, the a B2C model, uh, the, the, the actual customer sees, but also in our field and our channel. So our field sellers, our salespeople, see your solution just as if we're a Microsoft uh, first party solution. So, so Microsoft, the, the commercial marketplace, uh, lets you expand your reach, extend to new channels, and accelerate your business. So let me, let me explain a little bit what this means. Expand your reach is you basically instantaneously get a, a reach to millions of cost Microsoft customers like that. The, the online marketplace, the one that is uh, public uh, to the public, has a 3 million unique uh, um, impressions a month. So you get that 3 million people a month a possibility that, that people see your solution. And we sell over 140 geographies uh, uh, already, so you don't have to worry about uh, currency exchange and taxes and all that stuff. Extend to new channels. By the virtue of being on the marketplace, you can opt in and have your solution to be sold by our channel, which is uh, like 60,000 plus uh, channel members. Uh, simplify the purchasing, and then accelerate your business. And this is probably the most important part. What this bullet says is that our sellers are motivated financially to sell your solution. So, you basically expand your sales force uh, with ours. So, so if you look at this as the this uh, concentric thing, uh, well, they're not concentric. These circles uh, show the, the the expansion, the the reach of being on the marketplace. So it goes from the individual field sellers, that's the name that we use for our salespeople, to inside sellers to channel to the marketplace. And you can see pretty much the reach. Uh, it goes from one, one to one, to one to many, to one to thousands, to ultimately the marketplace, which is one to millions of people. So, so that's your reach by virtue of being uh, listed and, and being transactable from the Microsoft marketplace. That's the advantage. Why, the, why bother do that? So there you have it. I mean, that's all we have. Uh, um, uh, we, Ershenka and I, are going to be around. If you have a solution um, uh, that want to move it to, to Azure and, of course, want to use the ODA, uh, uh, Open Cloud, or move your solution or both, please uh, uh, reach out to us. Uh, we're going to be here today and tomorrow. And uh, we, like I mentioned before, our team helps software vendors to get on Azure and on the marketplace. So we'll be happy to engage with you. And if it has open cloud in the mix, we'll do a three-way collaboration and we'll get you an open cloud and on Azure. So that's our job. We want, we want to have the who's who in manufacturing and engineering on Azure. And uh, that's our job. So with that, thank you very much. And uh, arrivederci. Buonasera. Thank you.